Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck titled Loxodons as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the capital X is very important since we're building around Hamza, Guardian of Arishan from the latest anthology expansion, a 6 mana 5-5 five five legendary creature elephant warrior that costs one generic mana less to cast for each creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it. And then afterwards, creature spells we cast cost one generic mana less to cast for each creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So Hamza rewards us for playing lots of cheap creatures with plus one counters, but then also rewards us for having lots of expensive creatures with plus one counters afterwards, which is why the perfect solution is to play a whole bunch of creatures with X in their mana cost that enter the battlefield with plus one counters, so we can play them early to enable Hamza, and then once we have Hamza in play, they can make use of the discount to play the X for much larger cost. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, we're also playing with Venerated Loxodon as the second Loxodon in the deck, a 5 mana 4 4 Elephant Cleric with Convoke. And when Loxodon enters the battlefield, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it. So that's a way to put plus 1 counters on creatures that typically don't enter the battlefield with plus 1 counters, like our Conclave Mentor, which is going to double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters, which is also quite powerful in the deck. So let's take a look at the 1-drops, where we have the full playset of Pelt Collector, 1 mana 1-1, one, one, and whenever a bigger creature enters a battlefield or dies, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Pelt Collector, and it gains Trample as long as it has 3 or more counters on it. So Pelt Collector is a great 1-drop to kick things off with, as it'll easily grow over time and also help enable Hamza. Then we have a whole bunch of creatures with X and their mana cost, including a Chamber Sentry, which enters a battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. Now we're kind of a two-color deck, although we are adding a whole bunch of off-color pathways in the mana base to help enable Chamber Sentry, so we can play it for X equals a much larger number than just two. Now do keep in mind, Chamber Sentry interacts in a bit of a strange way with Hamza. If we have Hamza in play alongside creatures with plus one plus one counters, we have to take that discount into account when casting our Chamber Sentry. So let's say we just have green and white mana available, and we have three creatures in play with plus one plus one counters, we still have to cast our chamber sentry for x equals 5 and it will enter the battlefield with only 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters but if we cast it for just x equals 2 it will enter the battlefield as a 0 0 die immediately and you're gonna feel pretty bad so that's an important interaction to keep in mind and then in the late game if we have all five colors we can also return a chamber sentry from our graveyard to our hand and by paying x and tapping chamber sentry we can remove x plus 1 plus 1 counters from it to deal x damage to any target so that gives us a bit of built-in removal in our otherwise only creature deck which is why we can run Umori the Collector as our companion and naming creature which also synergizes with all those X casting cost creatures. Then we also have the full playset of Stone Cold Serpent which enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters and also has Reach, Trample and Protection from Multicolored so a lot of very useful keywords. And then finally Ugin's Conjurant also enters with X plus 1 plus 1 counters and if damage would be dealt to Ugin's Conjurant while it has counters on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus 1 plus 1 counters instead. So Ugin's Conjurant is definitely the weakest of these early creatures we can potentially run out, which is why if we have multiple of them in our opening hand, we typically want to kick things off with an Ugin's Conjurant for X equals 1, so we can play a bigger Stone Coil and Chamber Sentry. Now do keep in mind that if we do manage to play Hamza, even if we're tapped out, we can still potentially play a large Stone Coil Serpent or Ugin's Conjurant, thanks to that mana discount, which can also give us a very explosive turn. Then up next we've got some creatures with X in our casting cost that we can't really run out on turn 1, including Wildwood Scourge, which we can cast for X in a green, and then the Scourge enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, and whenever one or more counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, we can put a plus 1 counter on the Scourge, so it can quickly accumulate extra counters. Now do keep in mind it does say non-Hydra, so that includes other copies of Wildwood Scourge, but it also includes other copies of Voracious Hydra, which is one of our other removal spells in the deck that we can cast for X and double green, has trample, and enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and then when it enters we choose to either double the number of plus 1 counters, or we can have the Hydra fight another target creature we don't control, so that also gives us access to more removal, and another neat trick we can accomplish with Voracious Hydra is to activate Mikaeus the Lunark in response to the fight ability to make our Voracious Hydra a little bit larger to hopefully win the fight, and Mikaeus the Lunark is up next, X and white for a legendary creature that enters 
with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we can tap Mikaeus to put an extra counter on him, or we can tap Mikaeus and remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Mikaeus to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature we control, so that gives us access to a repeatable anthem effect that will keep making our creatures larger and larger, and it is especially powerful alongside Conclave Mentor, the 2 mana 2-2 two -two that says if one or more plus 1 counters would be put on a creature we control, that many plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on that creature instead, and when the mentor dies we also gain life equal to its power, so just a very synergistic creature in this deck. And then of course topping off our curve we have our Loxodons with Venerated Loxodon which we can typically play around turn 3, and our Hamza which we can often play around turn 4, and then still potentially play some X mana cost creatures afterwards. And then going over the mana base, we do need quite a few green-white dual lands, including four copies of Temple Garden, four of the green-white pathway, and then we also get to play with Ancient Ziggurat, which can only tap four creatures, but it does make one mana of any color, so very useful alongside our Chamber Sentry. Although do keep in mind, we cannot use Ancient Ziggurat to pay for the Chamber Sentry's ability to return him from the graveyard, and we also cannot activate it to pay for Umori's companion tax, so those are small interactions to keep in mind. And then as we discussed, we've got some off-color pathways for Chamber Sentry as well, although they will always produce either green or white mana, so we have some of those sprinkled throughout the deck, and then one basic forest and one basic plains as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We'll play a Conjurant on turn 1 here, and double green's more important than double white. Turn 2, probably play a Conclave Mentor. So we can play these afterwards. Opponent with a Temple of Malady. So black green. And there's Hamza, perfect. Could also decide to play these two for X equals one just to put Hamza in place sooner, but then we won't have a ton of you know payoff cards afterwards. So I think Mentor's still better here. Could also potentially go with a second mentor, it kind of depends if we draw land or not. Because then going second mentor into Chamber Sentry or Stonequill for one might be the preferred play. Alright, Falmar Knights. Make that two, so it could be a blank green Death Touch deck. Picked up Pathway. So yeah, I'm kind of okay going for mentor into Stonequill. And then we can play a bigger Chamber Sentry later to mow down all these Falmar Knights. Hooded Blindfang. And Falmar Knights attacks. Probably okay to trade for Conjurance, even though it will make Hamza a little bit more expensive. Alright, so we can play Sentry for three different colors. Enters as a 5-5. Five five. And no attacks. And then, probably not gonna trade this turn. Next turn I can either activate Sentry to kill some creatures or play Hamza. Maybe even both. And there's Finn the Fangbearer into another Blind Blade. Blind Fang and Falmar Knight both attack. Yeah, I think we'll take it for now. And then Chamber Sentry can mow down probably Finn next turn. Or I could trade for Blind Fang here by double blocking with Conclave Mentors. And then next turn kill Finn. Yeah, I guess it's reasonable too. Could also double block with Serpent and a Mentor, but they're probably gonna kill a Mentor either way. And then once we take care of kind of their payoff cards, the 1-1s one aren't too threatening. Loxodon's also nice. So we'll pay 3. To shoot down Finn. That works. I 
They do still have a castle they can activate to draw more cards. And now Egon, God of Death, into Shovel, Bane of Monsters. Alright. So now regular damage is what we're afraid of, but we can take two. Stone Quill's nice. So, a few ways we can play this. Just going Hamza into a 3 3 Stone Quill doesn't seem bad, and then I can still convoke Loxone after. Sure. So X equals 2. But it enters with an extra counter and then we can still convoke. And then I can only tap two creatures because of course we get the three cost reduction here. So Chamber Sentry is a good one to put more counters onto. And Maybe go for Hamza so it can line up against Egon. We do have protection from a shovel at least with a stone coil. Hmm. Yeah, I guess Hamza is reasonable. And pass a turn. Could also decide to double block Egon here. We'll see. Nighthawk Scavenger can fly over. And our opponent sends the team. So Shovel we can kind of take out for free here with Stone Coil. And then our opponent's got one creature left in the graveyard. Eh, it's probably still fine to double block Egon. And then we will lose both Serpent and Loxodon. I have a big Hamza left. And then Chamber Sentry has to mow down the 1-1s. Seems fine. And then any big creature we top deck, we get a Hamza discount as well. I like this Wildwood Scourge. So I could kill Nighthawk Scavenger and hit the opponent for 12. And then still play a pretty large Scourge. Yeah, that's probably fine. So X equals uh, 3 since we have three creatures with counters on them, and now we can still activate sentry for three. And attack. So sentry putting in a ton of work. Put a blind fang off the top, that's a good one. Their opponent attacks, they're gonna gain to up to 13. So if I take it down to 6, next turn, let's say I attack with everyone. Opponent has to block Hamza. Still take 7, 8, 9, 10. And then they've got two 1 1 Death Touchers. Yeah, that seems okay. And another Hamza. Makes this attack a lot less painful. So yeah, let's send a team. It's a force block on Hamza, otherwise they take 13. And we've got a backup. So I don't think we're dead to any specific top deck. Another Blind Blade. Opponent goes to two. So just send the team sideways. And we could still put Umori in hand here if we wanted to. And then cast it with a two mana discount. So we actually could have cast Umori here if we wanted to. Although we would have had to do it main phase. GG's. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one. Kick things off with Ugin's Contrant, perhaps. Whatever we play is probably gonna die to the Firebrand anyway. Do have a lot of colors here, so yeah. Conjurant seems fine, and then can set up a larger chamber sentry. And then I might hold Mentor until we can play Mentor and another creature in the same turn. Alright, putting some goblins instead. So I guess Mentor is probably gonna survive then, and we're fine to play it here. And then I could use Hydra to take out a smaller goblin later. For now, play this as a green source, play Mentor and Pass, and then I can play a Scourge into maybe a Chamber Sentry next turn. Alright, it's gonna be a Krenko Thin Street Kingpin. So I could already Voracious Hydra to fight Krenko here, which is maybe not a bad idea. Alternatively, I could stick to the Wildwood Scourge Chamber Sentry plan. Although Wildwood Scourge doesn't pick up counters from Voracious Hydra, so I think this is okay. And then I guess I'll still go for a blue source here in case I can play a bigger sentry later. Sax so equals one. But it will enter with two counters, so still enough to fight Krenko. Although they could use the Firebrand to finish off our Hydra. So X equals one, but it will enter with two counters, so still enough to fight Krenko. And we'll pass. So next turn is potentially scary if they have a Muxus. But there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Double Instigator. Alright. Castle Embereth also potentially a threat. So this is a good turn for Scourge plus maybe even double Chamber Sentry. And then no attacks. It's gonna be a Goblin Trash Master. Alright, so they can sacrifice goblins to destroy my chamber sentries here. Although they probably still don't have any good attacks. Ooh, Mikir is a Lunark. Probably better to still kill the Trash Master. Play this for X equals 2. Enters with 3 counters. And fight a Goblin Lord. But they can take out Chamber Sentry beforehand. They don't. Alright. I guess I'm fine attacking with them now. So they do finish off Voracious Hydra. And I could even send Scourge, keep this one back since it's a good blocker. Yeah, that looks good. Just a chump. And then next turn Mikios can start pumping up the team. Right, Siege Gang. We can maybe take out with Chamber Sentry before it does too much damage. So that's two mana. And then can play Mikios for one. And still convoke Loxodon. Definitely wanna 
tap Sentry and Mikius. Mentor's probably a good target. Conjurance a good one. And our opponent packs it in. So yeah, despite being a creature-only deck, we had quite a bit of removal here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an okay-looking hand. Turn 1, we can play a Stone Coil. Turn 2, probably Scourge into a turn 3 Mikaeus for X equals 2. And then Mikaeus can add more counters to the team, which also synergizes with Wildwood Scourge. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1, Swamp. And no play. Mentor's also interesting. I think I want to save Mentor until we can play it and activate Mikaeus to put counters everywhere to get kind of immediate value. So still gonna stick to the plan and play Scourge for one. Opponent seems to be holding an instant, so probably a fatal push. Which I could bait out with Mikaeus for one, since we have a backup. We'll just go with a Scourge instead. Right, it's gonna be a Thieves Guild Enforcer instead. So some sort of rogues deck. Hamza's an excellent draw. So let's go for Mikaeus. Which cannot be countered by Drown and Loch since cover mana cost on the stack is 3. And then probably no attacks. If they have the 1-3, they could double block, and that's probably not great for me. And yeah, next turn we can already play Hamza. It's gonna be Drowned Secrets for now. So it's more of a mill deck than a rogue stack, really. Ooh, Loxodon. So many options. So if I play Hamza, I can still convoke Loxodon, tapping two creatures. Yeah, that seems quite powerful. Tap this and this. And then Mikaeus activates. And Scourge can attack for 8. Alright, gotta hope there's no sweeper, although something like a Ritual of Soot doesn't even kill Hamza or Loxodon here. Extinction events would be pretty bad, naming odd, but they have a tap land, so they wouldn't be able to cast that here. I guess we would still have Hamza and Stonequill with an extinction event, so... Now we get to go Mentor. Activate Mikaeus. And then this Mikaeus, we get a nice discount as well, since we have now five creatures with plus one counters on them. So I could play Mikaeus for X equals six here. And uh, attack for approximately a million damage. Not too bad. Alright, we're on the play with a bit of an expensive hand, but probably still a keep. We can play Chamber Sentry on 1, make us on turn 2, and then with the third land we can play a Lockstone on 3. Alright, so make us for 1. And then turn 4 we should be able to play Hamza. And then we'll have access to very large Voracious Hydra afterwards. Opponent what looks to be on a Gates deck. Hopefully there's no Sweeper incoming here. But a Gates Ablaze could be quite effective. We're just gonna Convoke. Still need land 4 since the Loxodon didn't pick up a counter himself. And then next turn we can always activate Mikaeus to put counter on Loxodon, so we can play Hamza for X equals 3 if we don't draw land. So... Let's move to combats. Let these attack. And we'll activate Mikaeus. And play Hamza. Alright, hopefully we can dodge a Gates Ablaze. It's gonna be a Gatebreaker Ram. 
as a 6-6 and a Mesa's End. So that's the opponent's win condition here. Alright, so we have three creatures with plus one counters, which means we can play Hydra for X equals four. Um, which is not quite enough to already fight and kill the Ram. I think I'm gonna play Conclave Mentor first. And then I can attack with these two, since Mikaeus can put two counters on them now. Although, if they don't make me, I think I'll just level up Mikaeus instead and then next turn activate him. So we can play Giant Voracious Hydra. And by activating Mikaeus, we can still save two creatures from a uh, Gates Ablaze. So 7-7 seven, seven Ram. But our opponent explodes since just on the board, so we can activate Mikaeus to kill the opponent next turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and sadly cannot keep this without green mana. This is better. And what do we get rid of? Turn one, one drop, turn two, either Mikaeus or Scourge. So I guess Conjurant can go. And then we'll kick things off with Chamber Sentry, which is better than Conjurant's gonna be for us. And then I'll probably play Scourge on two, and then Mikaeus on three. And then probably Hamza the turn after, and then all our top decks are going to be quite powerful. Pelt Collector also interesting. Can't quite go Pelt Collector into Mikios to grow Pelt Collector here. Um, so I think we save it for next turn. I do want double green in play, so we'll just play Mikios for two. And hit for three. Opponent hasn't played anything yet, so it might be a wide controlling deck, which doesn't bode well for us. Solemnity. Players can get counters. Counters can be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Yeah, that's pretty good against us. Well, we can still play a 5-5 at least. And then hope they don't have a sweeper. Yeah. Well, that's probably game over. <laughs> I can play a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2, two, two, but... As soon as the opponent finds the second piece of the combo here... The 9 lives, it's definitely locked up. Gideon's Intervention... Intervention names Mentor... I guess we'll put Omori in hand, since Hydra is not going to do anything for us. Hit him for one. Yeah, Solemnity is a pretty brutal one. A Loxodon I can Convoke just to get a 4-4 out there, which is probably worth it. Sadly, no counters. Yeah, I think we may have found our literal worst matchup in the format. Not only is it a deck playing Wrath of God effects, which are often lights out on turn 4, but uh, Solemnity is probably the final nail in the coffin here. If we draw land, we can play a 4-mana four 4-5. Four Alright, luckily they had a second approach to take us out of our misery. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an excellent looking hand. Especially if we pick up an extra land or maybe an extra X casting cost creature we can play on the cheap. Facing turn 1 Thraven Inspector from the latest anthology as well. Next turn Pelt Collector is going to grow up to a 3-3 thanks to Conclave Mentor. 
do have a lot of Hydras, which, you know, is a bit of a number with Wildwood Scourge. Glass Caskets is unfortunate. Takes out Pelt Collector. And we'll play Mentor. And then next turn play Scourge for two, which will enter with three counters. And slowly work our way up to Hamza entering the battlefield. Ooh, Stone Coal's nice. So now I can play Scourge for max equals one. And play Stone Quail for one. Which will grow the Scourge as well, since this is not a Hydra. And attack for two. And then, yeah, next turn we could potentially already play Hamza. I'll save of Life's Bounty. And put on missing land drops. Alright, so I can play another Scourge into Conjurance. And then we can play 2 mana Hamza, potentially still play Creature afterwards. And Scourge can attack. Stone Coil probably doesn't want to. I'll say gonna chump. It's gonna be a second inspector into a third. Alright. And lots of inspectors on the case, and a Fountain of Renewal. Ooh, and a Venerated Loxodon. Now, something interesting to note about Loxodon is that it also takes the Hamza discount into account, so we might not be able to convoke it for as much as we want to. Um, but it is still a free 4-4, essentially. Although, the mana situation makes it a little bit more difficult. Nah, I guess we'll still go for it, and then I can tap Hamza to convoke Loxodon, essentially. And then probably send a team besides Mentor. And then next turn play a large Voracious Hydra. Alright, so our opponent needs a sweeper here. If there's a fourth land. And a Veto, that's probably not going to cut it, as we can play Hydra for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's a very large Hydra for just 3 lanes, and then could fight Veto, attack for the win, although I'm sure opponent's probably already just dead on board. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand's fine. Turn one, Conjurant. Turn two, Scourge for one. And then play a 3 3 Sentry on three. And then turn four, we can Hamsa and make all our future creatures better. And we're up against an Umori deck, so presumably creatures only. Could also be enchantments only. I've seen that a few times. I think I still prefer 3-3 three, three Sentry over 1-1 one, one Scourge and then Sentry. Alright, so it is enchantments only. Could also go Scourge into 1-1 one, one Sentry. Although we do have the means to play a 4-4 four, four Sentry next turn if we wanted to. So close call. The so Scourge into 1-1 one, one does apply the most immediate pressure and then I can play Hamza next turn. Maybe that's still the play. I'm 
And then we just gotta hope to top deck more creatures. Oath of Kaya goes after Scourge. Although we can still play Hamsa here. And a Loxodon. So if I play Hamsa, I can play Loxodon for three, so I can actually still convoke it here, which is pretty neat. And at least we don't have to worry about sweeper effects out of a Numori enchantments deck. So that's a lot of power and toughness, despite facing two removal spells, and yeah, my opponent explodes. So that's the power of the Loxodons. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Pelt Collector into Conclave Mentor is a good start. But we can also take a slightly different approach by playing Scourge first. Alright. Definitely play Scourge first now. Ephemia makes a zombie. So some sort of black enchantment deck, although without Lurus as companion. Then I'll play Conjurant for now, so we can play larger Stone Coil next turn. And if they want to trade, hmm, I think I want to wait since Scourge is going to get so much larger, and they might have more Ephemias in hand. Soul Shatter goes after Mentor. And we'll play a 4 4 Stone Coil. Play this as Rats in case we pick up a Chamber Sentry later. Don't really want to trade Conjurant in case we pick up Hamza. And Mikios can also make this larger than a zombie token. Mars Grasp takes out Conjurant. And that makes another zombie. Alright, Scourge. I guess I'll play 3-3 Scourge. And then next turn Stone Cold triggers both. Although 5-5 Scourge this turn could maybe attack. Now we'll play 3-3 here and hope they don't have another Mars Grasp, which... You know, they probably don't since they didn't play it. Playcrafter, I guess, gets my Stone Coil. And then I'll send a smaller Scourge in case they want to double block. That's fine. We've got five lands in play. Hopefully we just stop deck more creatures and not more lands. Rankle is gonna get blocked by Stone Coil. So that has to play defense. So I could put Umori in hand, but then there's a chance they can make me discard it if they remove Stone Coil. Scourge, probably fine to attack. Just a chum block, so probably not their Ephemia in hand. So if their hand is Ephemia plus something else, do we... I guess we could put Umori in hand and not play the pathway here. That makes sense. Uh, there's the other Ephemia. And a Grasp to shrink down Stone Coil so they can attack. And they're gonna sacrifice a creature. Stone Coil can go. 
and then we'll play Umori into a 3-3 Conjurance. Which grows a Hydra. And now the Sacrifice effect isn't too bad since we can just get rid of Conjurance. Torment of Scarabs. Alright, a new Anthology card here. So we lose three unless we sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card. But my opponent appears pretty dead. We'll sacrifice Conjurance. And I'll lose three. And I guess we might as well play some stuff pre-combats. So Mikaeus for X equals three perhaps. Thanks to the Mori discount we can play it for one bigger and then maybe still play Voracious Hydra here but yeah assuming they didn't have any instants they were dead on board. So yeah overall this green white plus one counter Loxodon tribal deck may not be the most powerful deck in Historic. It's also quite vulnerable to sweeper effects since it kind of has to go all in to leverage most of its synergies like the various Loxodons so you can't really hold back which means that any sweeper effect like Wrath of God is going to be especially painful. But if you don't face those sweeper decks then we do have quite a bit of creature interaction built into the deck with Chamber Sentry and Voracious Hydra so it's not quite a linear creature deck that doesn't interact at all and then we've got a lot of powerful synergies especially once we get to late game with Hamza so not a bad deck but maybe not quite competitive enough for the ranked ladder so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.